Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> Carol Baskin here, just kidding. Katie Couric here. Um, I don't know if you all saw, but we're gonna have a conversation about mindfulness uh, from the head of meditation at Calm. Jeez, I'm looking sort of scary today, you guys. I'm sorry. Ugh, my hair is dirty. My skin is kind of a wreck, but what are you gonna do? Um, it is what it is. So we're gonna be joined by Tamara Levitt. I'm excited to meet her and talk to her. And if you all have any questions, please feel free. She's going to come and join us in just a second. Um, so Tamara is, as I mentioned, if you're just joining me, hi, everybody. Good morning. And I apologize. My hair is, I'm a hot mess today. What can I say? But do you like my shirt? I wash my hands. Uh, a place called The Shop Forward sent me this, along with social distancing expert. Um, I just exercised this morning. We're going to talk about mindfulness with Tamara Levitt, who, as I mentioned, is the head of mindfulness, geez, Louise, for uh, the app Calm. So she creates a lot of the content. She's gonna help us learn and understand how meditation can improve your mental health, reduce stress and anxiety, and uh, really help you through this uncertain and stress-inducing time. So let me see where Tamara is. She has requested to join. I don't look great, but you're nice to say that. I feel like I look awful, but what are you gonna do? I mean, right, it is what it is. Am I, are you wearing peepers? No, these are, uh, I love this glasses company. They're called iBobs. Um, I, I like their glasses. They have a lot of cute styles. These are kind of, um, I don't know. But the problem is, see, I got a little ring light, you guys, from Amazon and the light shows up in my glasses, and then I look super weird. So just ignore that. Um, Tamara, where are you? How are you guys doing today? What's going on? Are you guys having a good day? Why? These is the tight, what? Okay, hold on. Here she comes. Let's see if we can make it work. Hi. This is when you stretch. Da, 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 da. Hi. Hi, Tamara. Hi. How, How are, are you? you? I joined from the Calm account. Sorry oh, for the confusion. Fantastic. That's okay. Thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning. Um, I think your services have never been so sorely needed, Tamara. First of all, I want to know how, okay, everyone who's just joining us uh, from the Calm app or from my, my Instagram account. Tamara is the head of mindfulness for the app Calm. And look at her, she looks so calm right now. You look so serene and calm with your flowers behind you, Tamara. So she's gonna give us some tips, you guys, on meditating and breathing and relaxing and in general, reducing the anxiety that many of us are feeling during this uncertain time. So Tamara, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. It's such a pleasure to be here. And so if you caught me two days ago, I wouldn't be this calm. Really? Yeah. Were you feeling stressed out? Uh, I'm definitely feeling it. You know, I don't think that there's anyone that's, you know, walking the planet right now that isn't feeling the impact of what's happening, right? I know. I it is... Sorry. No you, no, you go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, mindfulness helps us manage the stress and anxiety, but it's still there for sure. Yeah. Well, I think you yeah. probably have to practice a little more of it these days. And before you give us some tips, I'm curious, how did you get into mindfulness yourself and yeah. by the way i just want to encourage people watching if you all have some questions for tamara let me know so i can communicate and she we can respond to them mm -hmm, for sure um yeah so I, it was quite a while ago i mean i've been practicing for about three decades now and i you know i think that most people who have a really uh, long-term serious practice come to meditation and mindfulness because there's struggling in their life. There's some kind of suffering. And for me, I grew up um, with uh, some trauma. I had an abusive father. So, you know, that led to depression and anxiety and PTSD. It's really hard on your nervous system to grow up in that kind of environment, right? So part of it was me looking for a way to navigate all of these big emotions that I was holding, anger and fear. And, um, you know, the more that we experience an emotion, the more, the more that emotion strengthens within us. 
So I developed generalized anxiety disorder. Um, I had an eating disorder. Uh, lots of things can manifest out of trauma. So really that was kind of the course that directed me towards mindfulness because I was looking for a way to find some peace in my life. Right. That's so that's so interesting. By the way, it's Tamara, not Tamara. Tamara. So, Tamara I'm sorry, I mispronounced no it, Tamara. Um, you know, I think that people, it seems to me only in the last decade or so, have we started understanding the physiological, not just the emotional, but the physiological Im impact of stress, the increase of cortisol that you produce, mm -hmm. how bad that is for your body. And you know, I think one of the most compelling reasons to meditate is and to practice mindfulness is that it can actually change your chemical makeup, mm -hmm. which can really have an impact on your physical and mental health. Can you explain, mm -hmm. Tamara, how that works? Because I think that's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll share. I mean, there's a couple of ways that I can explain it. Um, the first is that our brain is shaped by our thoughts and our experiences. So if we're practicing piano often, we're gonna become really good at piano. And if we're practicing uh, guitar, we're gonna be really good at guitar. So what happens if we're worrying all the time? We become very good at worrying. We become very good at worrying. And if we're experiencing anger all the time, the feeling of anger is gonna strengthen in our body, right? This is neuroplasticity. So if we're practicing mindfulness and meditation, on a regular basis, it's going to strengthen qualities like calmness and concentration and non-reactivity. Um, the other thing, as you mentioned, another really interesting point about stress in the brain is that our amygdala manages our fight and flight uh, response, right? And so that's where uh, our amygdala, like when we experience stress, our amygdala releases cortisol and adrenaline, which we don't want much of in our body. So what happens when we meditate is, um, and if we're meditating regularly, it actually has the potential to shrink the size of our amygdala. So that wow. reduces the amount of stress hormones that are released into our body. So you are the person who creates some, by the way, someone said they listened to you last night, Tamara, but because they couldn't get to sleep. So I think you have a lot of fans who are watching this, who listen to you on, on the Calm app. When you create content, on the app. So can you tell us how you come up with sort of, a, and, and what drives you? I know you try to translate wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, it's that someone just wrote that I am a mythological animal. I have no idea what that <laughs> means, by the way. We get a lot of interesting comments. Most yeah. of my followers are, are really great. Um, some are a little crazy. But anyway, so tell me about, uh, you know, how you decide what content you're going to put on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for me, uh, it's important that we're creating content that is secular, that's universal, that's going to be relatable to everyone. And, and really mindfulness teachings are. Mindfulness principles are really relatable to everyone. And so one of the things that I strive to do is make the teachings relatable. And I often will do that through storytelling. So I bring my own experiences into the content. Um, you know, as you probably know, like storytelling is such a great way for us to learn and it's a fun way for us to learn. So I often will share anecdotes and stories and parables and it makes, uh, you know, when I'm not, when I'm, when I'm taking concepts and actually sharing them in a story and kind of reflecting back to people, this is what this looks like. This is what anxiety looks like. This is how uh, utilizing a mindfulness principle actually looks like and providing tools for them, really actionable tools, it leaves them with a feeling of um, comprehension and uh, it empowers them to be able to take mindfulness into their own life. And that's really what meditation is. It's a, a tool so that we can develop mindfulness and bring it into our lives. So for people who don't have the Calm app, tell me about, you know, basic, uh, 101, uh, in terms of what kind of things are available to people. I'm not doing an ad, I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. So um, we started with meditations and we have all kinds of meditations on you know, dealing with stress and anxiety and developing concentration. Um, 
uh, you know, learning how to deal with instability and uncertainty. Um, so we've got a whole range of meditation sessions and we have mindfulness programs as well. Uh, the session that most people tend to use and the session that people have found uh, transformational in terms of helping support them to develop a regular practice is the daily calm. So that's a 10 minute session that we release each day that people can tune into. Um, it makes it easier for people. We're busy, right? So being able to fit 10 minutes into your day, having a fresh new session that's gonna inspire your practice has helped people that never thought they could meditate become meditators. Um, we also have sleep meditations, which I know people are loving right now. Um, what are they called? Sleep meditations. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So sleep meditations. And I've struggled with insomnia. So this is one of the things that has really helped me. Sleep meditations are relaxing, calming, nurturing meditations. They focus on, um, you know, body scans and breath work and visualizations that can help people um, feel calm as they enter, you know, enter dreamland, kind of pull them away from their stress and worries and anxiety to a place of peace. Um, and then we have sleep stories, which are actually different. Sleep stories are kind of like bedtime stories for adults, um, although we have them for kids as well. And we've got some beautiful narrators, Matthew McConaughey and Eva Green. Um, they're, they're Maybe I can do one. Pardon? Maybe I can do one. Maybe you can. We would love you to do one. That would be wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been transformational. People have gotten off sleeping pills because they've utilized our sleep meditations and our sleep stories. It's a lot of people um, have asked, first of all, you have a lot of fans watching, Tamara. A lot of people love your voice. I think they find it incredibly soothing. Um, a couple of people asked, what was your favorite story that you've narrated? Hmm. Um, well, I think, you know, one, I, I think Luna's lullaby, I really love that. It's actually, it's a kid's meditation, but um, adults actually really love it too. And I integrated music and there's something that it's, you know, it's about um, uh, a child who loses their way and has to find their way back home. And I just, I kind of have an affinity for that one. The other one is The Waterfall, which was our first um, adult sleep story that Chris Advinson wrote. And that has a special place in my heart because part of how sleep stories got started is because I struggled with insomnia. My good friend, Chris Advinson, who works with us as head of sleep stories, um, he, I used to call him up when I had insomnia and he would tell me these stories that would help put me to bed. And I would fall asleep listening to his voice. Um, so uh, the waterfall was actually the first, um, the first adult sleep story. So that, that that he wrote and I narrated. It's so interesting that people are gravitating towards apps like Calm, and really there's a, a such a huge interest in mindfulness. I have a friend who teaches it, who lives in Detroit, who's being really helpful to people in that area. Um, and it's, it, it just has, has really uh, gotten incredibly popular, hasn't it? And I, mm -hmm. I imagine that in the last month or so, Tamara, interest in, in um, calm has really skyrocketed. Tell me about that and just interest in meditation in general. Yeah, we've definitely seen an increase in people coming to our app um, and to our free resource page. We actually developed... Uh, a free resource page for people who are dealing with stress and anxiety right now. Um, and it has sleep stories and meditations and music and, um, you know, all kinds of content to help people through this time. Um, and I can share the, the link to that as well. Uh, it's actually, I'll just share it now. It's calm.com slash blog slash take a deep breath with hyphens. Uh, and we've seen, I think like within the first couple of weeks, we've had, uh, over 1.6 million people access that page. Wow. So people, people are looking for ways to navigate this fear and uncertainty that we're struggling with. And everyone's experience through this is so unique and so different. So, you know, finding tools like this to help, you know, create some space around all of this upheaval has been really instrumental. 
Chastin Buttigieg, who um, I'm friendly with, I did an Instagram live with him a couple of days ago. He's such a nice person. He wrote, you know, as you know, he's a middle school teacher, um, that it's really good for the classroom, for kids and uh, for parents to do it with their children. You know, I think that it's such a stressful time, so much togetherness, homeschooling. I, my heart goes out for, to people who have little kids at home and are doing homeschooling because that's really, really hard. Um, and, and talk to us about how you can work with your kids and meditate with them together. Is there a good program to try to do that with? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing to understand with kids is they don't have, I mean, even us, we're going through a collective trauma. We don't even have the language to put words to what we're experiencing, right? Imagine how kids are feeling. Uh, I know my sisters have, uh, they each have two kids. They're both working professionals and they have to manage kids in their school and like, figuring out how to, you know, get online to, to, to learn. Um, it's, it's a lot and kids aren't going to their school and they're not understanding why the world has changed so much. So, you know, I know both my sisters have expressed their kids are angry and they're frustrated and they're, you know, and they're worried. They feel the worry that we're experiencing. So I think the first thing is to really understand that so that it can help us bring compassion and patience into our exchanges with our kids. Um, definitely mindfulness is really helpful. Uh, we have sessions in our apps for, ki uh, for kids of all ages. Um, one of the practices that I really love for young kids is one that's called belly breaths. And um, if you have a young child, and you can ask them to just grab their favorite stuffed animal, lie on the ground or, you know, on a bed. Um, they can do this with eyes closed or open, but they just gently place the stuffed animal on their belly and they take deep inhales and exhales and they watch the stuffed animal rise and fall. And just doing that for a few minutes can feel really calming because it brings them into the present moment and it just calms their nervous system. Um, for older kids, mindful walking is really helpful, like tuning into your senses, feeling your, you know, your feet as they touch the ground and the air on your skin and the smells in the air, you know, every, like all activities that kind of bring us into the present moment. But we have many different resources um, on, the, on the free resource app and in our actual app. That's awesome that you're doing that for people because I'm sure it's super helpful. I wanted to see if there's any other, a lot of people are saying this works for mental health. Uh, there's someone who's 55 and he's, or he, he or she, I couldn't tell, is going to try uh, both the, the teddy bear <laughs> exercise and the walking exercise. I think a lot of it is just being, you know, I know people who talk about mindfulness talk about being present. And mm -hmm. one of the ways you can do that, ironically, because we're doing this on our phones, is to put down your devices and to really um, focus on the here and now and to not be distracted. I'm, I do not practice what I preach. Uh, I interviewed Vivek Murthy. I mentioned this yesterday uh, in a conversation. He was the Surgeon General during the Obama administration, and he talked about the gift of undivided attention. And not only is it a gift to other people, yeah, you can ask questions, please feel free to ask any questions, but it's also a gift to yourself, I think, mm -hmm. to, to, to focus on, on yourself and your surroundings without kind of being distracted or pulled by your devices, by your iPads or your, your iPhones. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I was getting caught in that too, you know, for the first, for the first couple of weeks when this got intense, I was, I was online and I was trying to inform myself by, you know, by reading everything I could find. And it was very overwhelming. And then after that, I started monitoring the amount of news and social media that I was absorbing. And, and this is part of mindfulness, just recognizing, okay, I'm starting to get really anxious. My heart is racing. Do I really need to read another article about this? You know, and especially not doing it before bedtime. So that's what I've been trying to practice. But it's, it's easy to get caught up. We wanna know what's happening, right? If you don't go on the app and you just want to practice mindfulness in general, Tamara, uh, for example, like the teddy bear exercise, 
And I, I think there are some cynics out there. Um, and I was sort of cynical <laughs> initially, and I've had a hard time really kind of getting into the habit mm -hmm. of meditation. Uh, what, what do you think uh, are some good ways to kind of dip your toe in to, to see if you can kind of ease into a meditative or mindfulness practice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So in our, in our app, I would suggest the Daily Calm. Um, and just because it's easy, it's accessible, it's always changing, and it helps create regularity. Uh, outside of our app, you know, there's, a, there's, there's some mindful neck techniques that can be really valuable when we're experiencing stress and anxiety. And there's one that I've actually been relying on recently. Um, you know, every time I go to the grocery store, it is a very stressful experience. I think it is for most people now. Um, so the first time that I went to the grocery store, when you know, I noticed that shelves were emptying, people were wearing masks, uh, it was very jolting to my system and I left feeling really aware of the anxiety in my body. And so I did this exercise called Kumbhaka. Uh, Kumbhaka means breath retention. And there's different types of Kumbhaka practices, but I really like um, a breathing practice that's a uh, four, four, eight rhythm. And so you can do this anytime, anywhere. You basically breathe in for four, you hold for four, and then you breathe out for eight. And you can do this a few times and it's incredibly calming to your nervous system. Um, if you want, I can actually take you through it. Oh, you, sure, you like. why not? Yeah, you want to okay. try it? Sure. Okay. okay, so basically just close your eyes for like, and I'll just take you through four rounds. So it'll take about a minute. Okay, you guys so do this with me so I don't feel really super weird, everyone, I'm gonna okay? I'm going to close my eyes too. Yeah. Okay, I want yeah. everybody watching to try this because, yes. you know, I just want to mention that 36% of Americans told an American Psychiatric Association poll that the pandemic has had serious Im a serious impact on their mental health. So everyone, you 36 percenters out there, let's try to do it because actually... I, I really would like to do this, yeah. Tamara. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So everybody close your eyes and just take a moment to settle into your seat and turn your attention inward and then find your breath and we're going to inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and exhale. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can open your eyes. <laughs> so tell me about that that uh, technique or that rhythm and mm -hmm. cadence. What is it about that? By the way, I'm going to take a little nap now. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. What, yeah. what so is it that, that seems to kind of center you and calm you about those particular breaths. Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's two things. The first is that it's 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 creating an anchor for your attention. So it's pulling you away from your your busy, perhaps stressful, anxious thoughts, and anchoring your attention on something that's happening in the present. The other thing is elongating the exhale triggers the parasympathetic nervous system, which helps calm us down. So, and it's just, I find it very soothing. I mean, even when I lead it, I, I feel like it's very soothing. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing that. Um, someone asked earlier, I think we asked for some questions from my followers. And sure. um, this is, of course, the big question for me and probably for a lot of people. How do you stay focused during meditation and keep random thoughts? You know, all those things like, oh, I'm scared or what am I going to cook for dinner? Or do I have a sore throat? And all those things that kind of invade your head when you're trying to really calm yourself down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first thing is, I just want to clarify that having thoughts doesn't make you a bad meditator. 
right? We all have thoughts. If we're humans and we're walking around this earth, we are going to have thoughts. Um, there's many times that still after decades of practicing meditation, I'll sit down for a practice and my mind will just be busy with thoughts the entire thing. So more important than actually stilling our thoughts is learning how to respond to our thoughts, right? And so if we're able to just notice there are thoughts happening, but not get judgmental or tense or reactive to what's happening, we're actually meditating properly because that's the goal. Um, there's a phrase that I love, uh, no problem. Thoughts are arising, no problem. Emotions are arising, no problem. And this practice teaches us how to just hold whatever's coming up and how to be okay with what's happening. And then if we're less tense in our practice and more accepting of what's happening, it's gonna allow us to have a deeper concentration. It's gonna, you know, we won't be latching on to what's happening and we're gonna be able to still our minds more easily. Right? That's interesting. That makes sense, Tamara, because it's like when you tell yourself, don't think about this, don't think about right. this, don't think about this. This is all you think about, right? Exactly. So if, you, or if you're more accepting, then they kind of float away. I took a meditation class uh, or was, was taught by uh, a wonderful man who works for the David Lynch Foundation. And he just says, let them kind of wash away and then you kind of feel like they're on the surface of water. And as you kind of relax, you just feel like you're going d deeper and deeper into the water, which would be fine, but I have a fear of drowning. So maybe that's not a good image right. for me. <laughs> well, so, you can use clouds, clouds drifting by is a good one, right? Just the clouds come and they go. Our thoughts come and they go. Our emotions come and they go. Yeah. Well, I think this was so helpful. Is there anything, any other advice you'd like to give people out there who are, um, somebody just said, I need meditation in my life. Um, I think it's so great that you guys are offering some free services. Can you mm -hmm. tell everybody who's listening about that? And is the app expensive, Tamara? Um, I should know how much the app is. I That's think. all right. I think it's about $60 a year. Um, uh -huh. So we'll check uh, but, on it. Yeah, it's it's different, right? different Look, places. I, I should know how much our app is. That's all right. Uh, I've been with us for five and a half years, so I've-, I've My husband just on. bought it. My husband did it, thir didn't you do, John, 30 days in a row? Yeah, I got competitive. He got very competitive and he did it 30 uh -huh. days in a row and he said it really helped him. You sure. should start again, honey. I'm going to. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, they said it's $70 a year, which is a lot less than going to a therapist, right? Not oh. that, and by the way, therapy is great, if ever, but a lot of people can't afford. Someone else Absolutely. said $60 a year and everyone's saying right. it's worth it. But yeah. how do people yeah. get some of your free services that you're offering right now tomorrow? Yeah, so we created a web, uh, 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 free, webs, uh, free web page and it's, if you go to calm.com slash blog slash take a deep breath and it's, and there's hyphens in between. So it's take, take, hyphen, a hyphen, deep hyphen breath. It's a little bit long. I'll, I'll put that on my stories too. Oh, that would and be great. We'll feature this interview tomorrow on my newsletter, Wake Up Call, which everyone, if you don't get, please subscribe at katiekirk.com. We try to keep you from having to watch the news all day by synthesizing it and making it very understandable and explainable. But um, so just one more time for people who are tuning in, it's calm dot Calm.com. So it's, I'm actually going to spell it C A L M dot C O M slash blog uh, slash take a deep breath. And with hyphens, hyphens between each other. Hyphens word. in between take a deep breath. I should have written it out and held it up. Oh, that's okay. You know, <laughs> that's that okay. Time. We'll make sure that people okay. know it. And it's so, so nice meeting, meeting you. And I'm going to actually sign up for that today. And I'm going to practice just doing that breathing technique. Hi, Ann Keating. My friend Ann Keating is watching. Um, and, and I really appreciate it because I think uh, we all need to take care of our own mental health and the mental health yeah. of people we, we know and love. Someone just wrote it for us. The, the, and uh, okay. I'm trying to think if there's any other questions that we have. Well, Let I'll, me just share, see. I'll share one other really simple technique that you can do. Yeah. Which is um, just taking some long deep breaths, 
but play, but rest in your hands either on your belly or your heart center, because actually co connecting your like co bringing your hands to your body just helps ground you, and it makes it easier to tune inward into the breath. Uh -huh. So that's also just a really simple way of of just stopping, of just pausing, and you know, and and coming into yourself in a moment. And then do you do that same breathing technique that you told us earlier? Yeah, you can, or you can just elongate, you know, elongate the in-breath and elongate the out-breath so that, and you can have them even lengths or you can do the Kambaka practice where it's four, four, and eight. Um, you can figure out your own rhythm on your own, but uh, yeah, it's, it, it's very grounding to just be able to Hold your, hold your hand to your heart or your belly as you're breathing deeply. So again, it's inhale four, hold four, exhale eight. And exhale eight, yeah, yeah. Okay, everybody. Um, hopefully this was helpful. I really enjoyed meeting you and talk to, talking to you. This I've been sp speaking with uh, Tamara Levitt, who is head of mindfulness for Calm. And uh, you've got a lot of people who fall asleep listening to your voice. So I'm going to try it tonight. Oh, good. Anyway, like thank you so much. Stay safe so and stay well. home, everyone. And uh, namaste. <laughs> namaste. Okay, bye. Bye, bye. everybody.